Hey, many fish. 24th. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I had all this stuff still open, and I remembered that I was supposed to go over some stuff about the Rockefeller tree that sits right alongside Prometheus. And, you know, we could go into the whole Rockefeller thing, but basically what that Christmas tree represents is the birth of consumerism in the United States and the world that ushered in what we see in society now on Black Friday at Walmart. That's what they created, you know, and they worked alongside with Bernays and along came all these scientists and whatnot. In order for them to build this Rockefeller Center, they needed to evict thousands of people, which were multi-generational family businesses and homes. They just got them out of there. Four city blocks they stole, basically, and that's what it was. The Rockefellers, and everybody just loves the Rockefellers. They're philanthropists. But there's their tree that they put up in honor to their God every year and sucker the world into believing that it's a good thing, that it has something to do with Jesus. It has zero to do with Jesus. Nonetheless, let's look at some of the little, little treats that they put around Rockefeller Center there. They got... Uh, one particular thing, well, if we, talk, we showed you Prometheus, that's just weird in itself. Then they have this godlike in image here, with the compass in hand. I mean, everything about this. This is what they believe they are. They are the ones who will be the gods, and take the place of that guy we call Jesus. And they think that they're just going to slide on through and not have to deal with that little thing called judgment. But they're wrong. And they throw up a partial verse, mind you. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Isaiah 33, 6. And they don't even put the whole verse in there. Never mind give you the context. Because what Satan does is he takes scripture, he knows it better than anybody, and he dilutes it, he flips it, he twists it, and he just totally blasphemes the Word of God. And his main purpose is to keep people from knowing God. And so they throw Christmas trees and consumerism at you. If you look at some of the images on one of these articles I got here, right, about the Rockefeller Christmas tree, check this out, right? This, this brings me back to uh, Isaiah 22, 22. There's our buddy there. Okay, check out what they do. In order to guide it into setting it up, they drive a very large spike into the center of it. Right? Drive a spike into the center of it. By the way, Isaiah 29, 15, that was the verse that God gave me that told me what I was supposed to do for him. And that was to show the works of that are done in the dark to keep you from the gate. That's what they do. Surely you're turning of things upside down. But that's what they do. We go to Isaiah 33, where they steal this verse. 33, 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see what I'm saying? That ain't what they're telling the people by putting that up and putting an image of their gods all over the place. It's sick. And it's so blatant and so in your face. It's like, really? People don't see this? I mean, come on, folks. But I got to show you in the maps. I told you I'd show you in the maps. Very bizarre, folks. I got to tell you. But it's real. And this literally, like I say it all the time, this is Satan's little drawing board. It's his little easel that he puts his little vanities all over and laughs at everybody while he does it. Remember our triangle from the other day, the 209 miles, right? Well, I since went in there and did a couple other things that are going to really blow you away. We went from the obelisk in Central Park to the Washington Monument. But what I had forgotten, and this is just 
totally mind-boggling to me because I used to, I actually did work in this place in uh, in Boston. I lived and worked in Boston for 20 years. Okay, Bunker Hill Monument they call it. Well, yeah, it's a monument, but it's also a huge obelisk. A huge obelisk, a very important, very significant little, one of their little Google map pushpins, let's call it that. One of their phallic symbols, one of their homages to their God. That's all there is to it. I don't know how else to put it. But what are the chances, you guys? Think about this. You need to think about this. That line going exactly... And we're talking exactly, you guys. That's going to that's going to London. I'm going to show you that too. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh man, I got too many lines here, man. Right here, there it is. What are the chances of that obelisk lining up exactly with the Central Park obelisk and exactly with the Washington Monument? What do you think the chances of that are? like slim to none and it's exactly 396 miles 396 and I'm not done if we go from the Bunker Hill Monument we could actually go from any one of these monuments this is the only one I've done though from Bunker Hill remember I told you that there's a sister to the monument in Central Park there the Cleopatra's Needle that has a sister on Victoria Embankment on the Thames River in London. Well, check this out. We go from Bunker Hill to the London Needle. Okay, let's get this right here. Let's go right on in here. Boom. And I got the London Needle is right here. We go there. It's right there. Okay, I'm not really looking at the, the miles right now, although we will. But right now, I just want you to just notice this. You, you cannot write this off to coincidence or chance. You just can't. That that line would be right in line with everything else. Almost perfectly, according to Google Earth. That's insanity. That's insane. And let's go back to New York. Let me get rid of this line down here because I'm going to show you something. I can get rid of a bunch of these lines probably. Let's get rid of... Let's see. Dirka, dirka, dirka. Wow, do I have a lot of stuff here. Let's get rid of that one, that one, and that one. And uh, get rid of that. There's a Christmas tree. Did you know, as I just showed you in this article here, that there are three, including Cleopatra's Needle, three significant notable obelisks in the city of New York, Manhattan to be exact. The Emmett Obelisk, that's at Little St. Paul's Chapel, and the Worth Obelisk sits in the traffic island on Broadway and Fifth Avenue. That's the tree, there's your Worth Obelisk, and there's your Emmett Obelisk. What do you think the chances of those all perfectly, almost, I have to say almost, lining up right through the heart of Manhattan? From our Emmett Obelisk all the way up, we barely miss our Worth Obelisk goes right through our tree ceremony section there and right to Cleo. Not only does it go through those places though, it also goes right through. Right through. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Let's see if we get a good picture here. Yeah, right there. Right through the Washington Monument. And if you don't know about this little doozy, you might want to go look into that as well. You think the Rockefellers put all their little kingdom here in Manhattan right in this area that they had to have this section 
87 years ago, which incidentally, oddly enough, the Rockefeller Center was under an 87-year lease. I'll link this. Strangest thing you ever saw. There it is. 87 could theoretically last 87 years. That's going from 1928, 29, December 31st. I think that's this year, isn't it? Come on. It's just, you know, there are such things as coincidences, but there's also such thing as the devil. And he's a lot smarter than you and me. But he's not smarter than Jesus. That's why you need him to get you through this. Or else you will be devoured by these wolves. Literally devoured. Okay? So, I wanted to just share that little bit of just, I don't know, knowledge, I guess you could call it, right? Oh, let me show you one more thing I found a little while ago. Remember the pentagram that I showed you on uh, Governor's Island here, along with our little uh, mother of exiles, our little locust mother? I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I'm showing it to you now. You see this figure here? That I refer to as the mother of exiles, which essentially relates directly to the Statue of Liberty. But if we go from the center of this pentagram layout, which, you know, is like right here. So we'll go right from there, right? And let's go to Cleopatra's needle. Let's see what we got. Let's, let's put this in, in, uh, miles. Okay. This, this should kind of sum it up for, for some of you guys. So from the pentagram, to the needle we got oh I'd say we're within about five feet of 6.66 .66 miles but I'll just take the 6.6 .6 miles because that's what it is and that's not an accident none of this is an accident this is something that's been at work from the beginning he started his work in the garden and it's never stopped. You need to know who that is in order to know who the Savior is. Because he's the only one that can pull you from the furnace. Trust me, I speak from experience, you guys. I truly do. And uh, we'll probably get back to this at some other time. Peace and grace to you. Many fish. But have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Warn to them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 